your workout before you deploy. You've already been through basic, but since you likely forgot already, we're going to cover the fundamentals. Your compass at the bottom of your display is essential to figuring out which way you're going. Orders from your squad and fire team leaders will also appear here. Now head northwest towards the obstacle course. Let's see what you're made of. Get your ass to this obstacle course. Pick up the pace. Get over to that next obstacle. Double time. Help it over the obstacle. Jump up to reach the top and pull yourself over. Looks like you need some help, so why don't you ask your fellow knucklehead over there to help you over this wall. Balance yourself on those beams and get to the other side. If you fall, you gotta start again. This next evolution will get you used to what it's like to be under fire. You will be stressed, and this is a live fire exercise. Keep your head down and keep moving. Enemy contact! You're not dead. Get yourself geared up and get to the next station. Your next period of instruction will be about field dressings. The standard issue field dressing is critical for stopping all kinds of bleeding and trauma. Not only can you use it on yourself, but to also stabilize other wounds in the field, as you will see in the next station. dressing on a seemingly incapacitated man on the ground. Thanks. Welcome to my main base. There's a number of things you can do here, from weapons familiarization to learning about how you can communicate with your squad. Go around and take a look, and when you're done, head to the motor pool at the end of the base. This is an example of some of the ways you can be deployed in the field. The rally point is only for you and your squad, while the big bunker-looking structure is a HAB. HABs are meant for your entire team and are found only on forward operating bases or FOBs. In both circumstances, you will need to rearm your weapons from any nearby sources before moving out. Listen up. Communication is critical to surviving in a battlefield. Local comms allow you to talk with friendlies within a radius around you. Very useful for on-the-fly comms, inter-vehicle comms, and generally just getting the attention of the man next to you. Also, you're issued a squad radio, which you can use to talk with your entire squad no matter where they are on the field. This right here is the tactical map, where you can see all your friendly positions, orders from your squad leaders, and reports of the enemy activity. The map is divided up into grids. Each grid is designated by a letter and a number. If you want to be more specific, each grid is further divided into sectors as laid out on a number pad on a standard keyboard. Alright, if you look over here, this little diorama represents the armor distribution on an M1A2 main battle tank. In order for an anti-tank weapon to deal any damage, it needs to be able to penetrate the armor. No penetration, no fun. All vehicles have various components that can take damage, the most common being the engine. There are other parts like wheels, tracks, turrets, and even ammunition storage that can take damage and affect the vehicle in different ways. Here are some of the light vehicles that you might encounter. 
Often there are logistics trucks meant to carry supplies or civilian vehicles adapted for use on the battlefields. If you look over here, you may encounter some of these wheeled vehicles. Often they're used for troop transport, but also can put down a decent amount of firepower downrange. I highly recommend you do not use these as frontline units or you're likely to get your blood shot off. But honestly, I wouldn't feel too bad about that. If you look over here on this board are some of the heavy track vehicles you might encounter. Big freaking monsters like the main battle tank and the infantry fighting vehicle can be your best friend or worst enemy depending on which side you're on. Often they require a lot of anti-tank weaponry to take down. Sidearm is your next best friend in emergency situations. Pistols are not designed to be effective at longer ranges, so I'll try and get a fly at 100 meters. Designated marksmen are issued with a high caliber rifle designed to reach out, touch the enemy from further ranges than a standard issue rifle. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Take your time when it comes to these crucial shots. Automatic riflemen and machine gunners carry a machine gun like this to the field. Flying from a supported position, these weapons are highly effective at suppressing the enemy and can deliver the firepower of a team of riflemen. but it does what any good infantry weapon does best. Suppress and kill the enemy. All riflemen and support roles carry this as their primary weapon. The best way for you to shoot is in single shots. Take a moment between each shot and make sure you're still on target. Hand grenades are incredibly dangerous and should be treated with respect. However, they are a great means of clearing out a room in a group of enemies. All rolls are issued with these, either in the fragmentation or smoke variety for concealment. Grenadiers in your squad carry a grenade launcher slung under their primary weapon. These fire 40 millimeter grenades and are highly effective against infantry in the open and light vehicles. Just remember the grenades need a few meters of arm, so you can't fire these at point blank range.
anti-tank rolls are issued with rocket launchers that, depending on their yield, can damage and destroy enemy vehicles. The rockets need a bit of distance to arm, so avoid firing these at close range. The launcher also fires a deadly backblast, so make sure your rear is clear before firing. possibly made it here. I guess there isn't just empty space in that grape of yours. Now get the supplies out the freaking truck now. Let's go. Your squad leader has put down the stakes for where the new half is going to go. Get your shovel out and build it up, soldier. All right. Good work there, warrior. Hopefully, this will hold up better than that last one. We set up a mock scenario where you will need to execute the technique of fire and maneuver to advance on the enemy. Suppress the enemy machine gun position and use the wall on their fire to advance.
freaking time to sit here and remind you that you're being shot at. Let's go. Keep it up. Remember, fire and maneuver. Fire and maneuver. Get some lead down rage and give them a reason to keep their heads down. Once you get closer to the target building, you'll see another squad dressed up as the enemy. They will open fire if they see you, so make sure you take them down before they smoke your ass. Get through that freaking door. If you got a grenade, it would behoove you to use it now. Dirigi contact! the building all the way to the roof. Make sure you get every last one of them. That's where you're that building, soldier. One of your jobs on the battlefield as an infantryman is to take and hold ground. As you have just cleared the capture zone of all enemy forces, you can now capture the structure for your team. Taking this objective. And freaking tastic. Now let's get to the good stuff. Our last exercise here is to destroy the enemy's fob radio located behind the target building. Go up to it and destroy it with the provided engineer C4 chart. Taking down the enemy fob. Holy crap, how do you manage to get your pants on in the morning? There are alternative means of taking down enemy fobs such as a shovel, but explosives tend to be the most effective. Thinking about boots like you in charge of C4 is what keeps me up at night, but you somehow manage not to blow yourself up. So that's good, I guess. This concludes your infantry pre-deployment training. There are still many aspects of the battlefield that only experience can teach you. So learn from your buddies and trust your squad leaders. If you need more practice on a particular weapon system or vehicle, the Jensen's range facility is available at any time. Good luck out there, soldier.